Good afternoon, one and all. Uh, I would like to welcome you again back to this session today on National Student Startup Meet 2020. This is the second edition of this conference. As all of you know, Gujarat has been doing pioneering work in student innovation and startup ecosystem. Uh, we have been having various themes of dialogues and discussion and plenary this time. And uh, we recently heard in the morning the session about how academia drives innovation and entrepreneurs. Many champions who have enabled such type of ecosystem have talked to us. Now this session is going to talk, going to have a conversation more on early stage financing for startups. Because this is essential, because when you deal with young innovators and entrepreneurs uh, in academic incubators, any in our early stage ecosystem, this is the most talked about topic. And uh, I'm, I'm thrilled to invite uh, the distinguished panelists today. We also with us have our principal secretary, higher and technical education, government of Gujarat, Madam Anju Sharma, who is also the chairperson of IHUB. IHUB is a flagship institution to enable the entire hub and spoke ecosystem enablement in the state of Gujarat and predominantly across academia in the state. We also have with, our, with us have Mr. M. Nagarajan, Commissioner of Higher Education, Government of Gujarat, and the Honorary Executive of Honorary Executive Director of IHUB. We also with us have Dr. Dhruv Nath, the Director of Lead Angel Network. Uh, as, as I was telling just now before the session backstage, he has the rare distinction of being a veteran industrialist a distinguished academician, business management faculty, and now an, an, an angel investment uh, uh, champion in this ecosystem. So uh, Dr. Dhruv, welcome to you. We also with us have uh, Professor Himanshu Pandya, uh, Vice Chancellor of Gujarat University and Chief Mentor of IHUB, who has been actively guiding the entire ecosystem building strategy at IHUB. We also with us, Mr. Sasikan Choudhury, the co-founder of Tribe PT Limited, from Nagpur, the founder of Nagpur Angel Network, and all distinguished uh, celebrated stakeholders from the investment ecosystem. We'll certainly have Ravi Ranjan from Venture Nursery, which is one of the most successful early stage venture financing. So Ravi is here. So uh, uh, an active ecosystem enabler and an early stage investment platforms. So uh, it's a distinguished panel. This session is going to have a conversation around how early stage financing looks like today, what is the scenario of early stage financing to innovators and startups, uh, global best practices in this domain, what are the gaps in Indian startup ecosystem and innovation ecosystem, particularly pertaining to the early stage financing of innovators. Also, we'll have a dialogue around how it looked like in days to come, how ecosystems like uh, Gujarat and others need to cross learn from each other, and also uh, how do we successfully convert the journey between mind to market and idea to proof of concept. So uh, having said that, May I now request uh, Anju Sharma, Madam, uh, our chief uh, inspiration and the principal secretary, Higher and Technical Education, Government of Gujarat, and I have a uh, chairperson to, uh, to enlighten us, to guide us how this ecosystem is shaping. And uh, uh, shortly after that, I will request all our speakers to share their thoughts uh, how how this early stage financing ecosystem works. So may I request Anju Sharma, Madam, uh, to address us. Namaskar. Uh, good morning. I welcome all the panelists to this session on venture financing for the startups. As you all know, that National Student Startup Meet is our annual program for uh, student startup felicitation. And we have a vertical called uh, Startup Prashansha. In the startup presentation, we are felicitating and recognizing the efforts of various institutions, mentors, coordinators, and startups who have done exemplary work throughout the year. So we started this tradition of having students startup meet uh, for the last two years. And this year we are having a two day program and this year we wanted to engage all the stakeholders in the startup ecosystem into deliberations to improve upon further on what we what I have is doing. Uh, as you all know we started in January 2017 with the student startup and innovation policy. It's been now almost 
three and a half years that we started implementing the uh, policy actively. In fact, the, I would say the active years have only been two years because the first year was mostly on sensitization, capacity building, and uh, letting people know about what the policy was all, uh, all about, what the startup and innovation culture was all about. So it was a great deal of effort percolating everything to the uh, academia, to the smallest of the institutions across the length and breadth of the state. So uh, once we'd done that, it gave us a sufficient launch pad to uh, venture into the next stage. And that's how we went into the next stage. And I'm happy to uh, mention here that in the last two to two and a half years, we have been able to get about uh, more than 700 startups and uh, more than 700 patents. So that's how the journey has been. And then last year, late last year, we started IHOP as a Section H company to work as a common resource center for all these startups and, uh, and also all the institutions that are engaged into the startup ecosystem. As a part of that, IHUB is, has several verticals and IHUB is primarily focusing on the uh, pre-incubation, incubation, both, both the verticals, along with a lot of capacity building and a lot of pipeline generation and a lot of uh, awareness generation. Not only awareness generation about startup, but hand holding and capacity building in terms of taking up programs for um, um, incubators, for uh, students, and generally for faculty members and for institutions on IPR, on how to run an incubator, on startups, how to fund startups, how to uh, develop business plan for startups marketing plan for startups. So all these things have been taken up by the, uh, by the IHUB, along with the incubation vertical, in which we have two verticals. One is the Srujan program and one is a GROW program. In the GROW program, we are taking up uh, prototype funding and the incubation for uh, smaller startups and the early stage startups. Whereas in the Srujan program, we are going for bigger startups requiring more funding than two lakh and also which are on a, at a slightly more uh, advanced stage of prototype uh, uh, making. So uh, we are mostly confined into the pre-incubation setup in the sense that uh, we are focusing our efforts on the uh, up till the prototype. And after the prototype, we expect these startups to approach the industries department and I create and other incubators to fund the uh, to fund their activities and to give a new give uh, and also the uh, venture funds to uh, support their activities and to become a partner with them. So uh, that way, venture funds are very important for us, and we have entered into several tie-ups also with the venture funds for uh, taking up this kind of programs. And we want venture funds to be an essential part of our setup. And as, as a result of that, the IHUB, the new IHUB uh, space that we have planned, that's about 1.5 lakh square feet space in the heart of the city that is under construction, which will be ready by the end of next year. We are planning a special uh, uh, garage for angel investors. So we angel investors garage where angel investors can come, they can meet, they can talk to the startups or if for some time they want to kind of have a small office there, that's also possible. So these kind of activities we are, um, uh, we will be promoting through that. In fact, even the, uh, even in the, uh, the premises that we are uh, housed now, we are open to the idea of having an angel investors garage and uh, working with the angel investors very keenly. Because uh, no doubt we have the government to fund and support the startups. We have the GBFL Gujarat Venture Financing Limited. And we also have the uh, other industries department and science and technology department schemes to support the startups financially. Uh, what brings most value is a private sector funding. And uh, this is uh, very important and let us not underestimate the importance of this. And you all are very important. And we would like to deliberate today on how we can 
prepare our startups to uh, prepare the pitches in a way that um, they can get funding and what they should do and what they should uh, work on while uh, um, working on startups so that their startups become more acceptable to the fund partners. You see, a startup is like a child, you know, so the way a mother likes her child, a startup promoter likes her startup, the idea. And the idea that this is my idea and like, so that is normally like people feel possessive about that and people don't want to give it, give it up and they don't want to make any change in that. So that also we've been telling our startups that don't, don't get stuck to it and be ready to make changes whenever uh, it's required. There should be changes brought in in consultation with mentors, in consultation with experts, because anything that is not dynamic, anything that is not moving is stagnant. Anything that is stagnant, it is as good as dead. So we want things to be moving. And in this fast, dynamic, technology-driven world, it's a movement that brings in growth. And it's always a movement that brings growth, I would say. And it's a growth that uh, drives us ahead. So uh, the floor is open to you all for deliberations. And that's all from my side. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation and joining us on this forum. Thank you. Thank you so much, madam, for putting the state uh, state in place and also telling how how it is important for an ecosystem to have access to early stage capital, early stage risk capital. So to start the conversation going, we will have Dr. Dhruv Nath, the director of Lead Angel Network. I'll just say a few words about Dr. Dhruv, those who, uh, uh, those who are a little lesser words with him. Obviously, he's a known figure. All, all of might have read his book. Dr. Nath is an angel investor and director of Lead Angel Network India. As a part of his journey, he has invested in 12 startups and has mentored over 50 of them. Earlier, he was a professor at MDI Gurgaon and senior vice president at NIIT Limited. He has been a consultant to top management in several organizations like Glaxo, Zillow, IOC, Thermax, Bajaj Auto, Air India, and many. Uh, Ajoela is the prime minister of Namibia and chief minister of Delhi. He is an electrical engineer and a PhD in computer science from IIT Delhi. He has written four books. The one of the foremost one, which I recently went through and liked very much, was Funding a Startup. I think he will share some of the insights of how to find startups. And other nightmares, code of the Susanto, which is again a dear friend from Real Angel Network, who has been talking to us, our ecosystem, through I have quite a, quite a big time. Dr. Nath, please guide us. Thank you so much. <clears throat> so I must tell you, you mentioned that uh, I had advised the Prime Minister of Namibia, uh, but after that he lost the elections. And I also advised the Chief Minister of Delhi and after that she died. So you can imagine how powerful my advice is, right? So I, I'm not too sure you should take my advice. <laughs> okay, anyway. So uh, I'm a, So first of all, I must say that I'm very impressed by what you people have done at IHUB. And I can imagine this happening in Gujarat because that's probably one of the foremost, you know, when you come to starting up businesses, that's probably one of the foremost states, if not the foremost in India. And by the way, we also have a branch in Ahmedabad from Lead Angels because we realize that uh, a lot of the action is right there. So what I will do is I will just quickly share my screen. Uh, and Hiranmay, you must remember I am a professor, so therefore I tend to talk a lot. Right. So when uh, you want me to shut up, just tell me to shut up. Okay. <laughs> okay. So um, I was asked to talk about funding a startup. And by the way, this is the book which uh, Hiranmay mentioned. And I'll just show you a live version of the book. So it's called Funding Your Startup and Other Nightmares. And what I what I'm sharing today is actually picked up from that book. So. What I will do is I will share with you one story uh, from the book, which is one of the startups I have been involved in. And from there, I would like to, to extract a framework for creating successful startups and for getting funding. Right. So I'll come to the framework later. First, I'll tell you a story from the book. Uh, so this story is about a startup called Squirrel. 
right? And you can see the squirrel in the picture. If you ever watch squirrels in action, you know they pick up food, right? But sometimes they eat that food, which is nuts and berries, and sometimes they save the food because there would be days when you know saving uh, when food is not available. For example, in the monsoons in India. Now, if you look at human beings, they also need to save. Although it's not food, it's money, right? The problem with saving is that there are far too many temptations, right? So, for example, if there is a brand new uh, bike that uh, Royal Enfield launches, all youngsters would want to go and pick up that bike, right? So, saving goes out of the window. So, how do people save? And for that, I will just take you guys back to your grandmother's time. If you remember, in your grandmother's time. there used to be something called a gullak and many families still use this eh? and as you can see this has a little slot right uh, in which you can put in coins so how does it work typically your grandmother goes and buys vegetables sabzi and let's say she gives a 10 rupee note and she has spent 9 rupees 80 paise so the sabzi wala gives her 20 paise back and that 20 paise in change goes into the gullak right so that is saved so that's the way it works and the reason why it works is that this is a painless process right it's painless and why is it painless because if you spend 9 rupees 80 paise spending 20 paise extra is not a problem right it doesn't hurt you so it works now what squirrel decided was that they would automate this good luck and the way they did this was uh, they said okay we will create an app so you have to download this app and every time you spend spend money digitally which means it could be upi it could be your wallet it could be online banking credit card whatever you get an sms right now the app accesses all your smss of course it's not interested in the personal ones it's only interested in those smss where you're spending money now it knows how much you spent at the end of the week it totals up your expenses and rounds it up to the nearest 100 rupees right so for example let's say you have spent in the week 1460 rupees it adds 40 rupees and rounds it up to 1500 and that 40 rupees is then saved by the app right so that's the way uh, squirrel helps in saving and by the way the big advantage here over the physical good luck is that this is automated right you don't have to remember to save uh it's happening automatically because you've given these instructions to squirrel when you registered on the app so now what's the next step the problem is you know nobody is going to pay squirrel for uh helping them save but they will pay them for other financial products for example for things like loans for things like insurance for things like investing in mutual funds and so on so what squirrel did was getting savers onboarded was the uh, entry strategy and based on that they said okay now we will offer them financial products for which we will charge okay and that's how they make money so that is squirrel and by the way as of today squirrel has about 4 lakh uh, uh, users of which about 2 lakhs are active which is fairly large in uh, this context so now let me just come to the the framework which i spoke about and the framework i call persistent right and persistent as um, uh, you can see it's a it's an acronym which means each letter stands for something and i'll take you through each letter one by one and i'll take the example of squirrel right through so the first thing you need is you need to be able to solve a problem for somebody because if you don't solve a problem nobody is going to come to you right and squirrel clearly was solving a problem the problem of saving and ultimately of getting loans investing buying insurance and so on so clearly they were solving a problem next is what i call earnings model which means somewhere you have to make money the fact that the customer is coming to you is not enough he has to be willing to pay you here clearly they were not willing to pay for uh, saving but they were willing to pay for things like insurance and uh, mutual funds and so on right so they had a good solid earnings model third size of the market you know when you create a startup you don't want a startup which stagnates at 20 30 lakhs you want something which grows and grows dramatically right in size and ultimately becomes maybe a crore 5 crores 10 crores 20 crores and so on so the size of the market has to be large 
for the startup to successfully grow. And if you look at uh, Squirrel, clearly they were aiming at the middle class, which is a huge market. It's 40 crores, right? So if you ignore China, this is probably the largest, I mean, larger than the population of any one country worldwide. It's a huge market, correct? So size of the market was not an issue. However, sometimes your market is very, very crowded with existing players, right? So for example, in this case, they are offering financial services. You have lots of players in this and lots of large guys, right? So you've got ET money, you've got Paytm money, You've got uh, Zerodha, you've got Policy Bazaar, Pesa Bazaar, Bank Bazaar, all kinds of guys offering exactly the same things, right? So the problem is for a startup to operate in a, in a market where there are already so many guys and that to large guys is very tough. So what do you need to do? You need to identify a large enough non-crowded subset of this market and I call that subset a niche, right? And if you look at Squirrel, they were very they were very smart. What they said was, we will not target everybody. We will target youngsters, you know, people in college. So let's say 18 to uh, 21 years old people, or even people in their first or at the most a second job. So typically people in the age group of 18 to 30. And, you know, while middle-aged people, people in their 40s, 50s, they keep buying insurance, they take loans, they invest, they save. It is the youngsters who don't do all this. So that is a non-crowded <coughs> niche within the crowded market space. And it was very, very successful. Uh, next is what I call scalability, right? And incidentally, as you'll notice, each letter, if you look at each of these phrases, the first letter uh, adds up to the persistent framework, right? So P, E, S, and S, and N I have talked about, right? Now, the question is, how scalable is Squirrel? Uh, you must remember, any startup which is purely digital is very highly scalable. For the simple reason that if you want to double revenues, you don't have to double manpower. You do not have to double buildings. All you have to do, perhaps, is to uh, add maybe some small amount of manpower, A, uh, spend on marketing, and probably increase the capacity of the server where you're hosted. As against this, manual businesses, are normally very highly non-scalable, right? Uh, and why is scalability important? Scalability is important because, you know, you may be operating in a very large market, but how rapidly can you grow within that market? How rapidly can you scale up? If you don't, the other guy, your competitor, will scale up faster than you, eat into your market share and potentially kill you. Right. So which is why scalability is extremely important. And Squirrel being a digital business was highly scalable. OK, then we come to the R in the word persistent, which stands for risks. And obviously, every business has risks. The biggest risk, obviously, is the fact that your competitor may eat into your market share and kill you. Right. And what you need really is an entry barrier. Entry barrier means what? Something in your business which prevents your competitor from entering your business. So it's a barrier to your competitor preventing him from entering, right? And clearly, if you have some kind of innovative solution, right? For example, if you have patents, which I can see iHub has a lot of startups which uh, where they have patents, that's a very, very solid entry barrier uh, because uh, patents legally cannot be copied, okay? Uh, if you look at Squirrel, the entry barrier was not great. Over time, of course, the trust and the brand uh, becomes uh, fairly strong, but it is not very significant, which is why they have to scale up rapidly. So Squirrel has to have a scalable model, which fortunately they do. right? And normally, entry barrier builds up over time. How much time do I have here in my? About one hour more? Sir, you can uh, take over 10 minutes more. Oh, wonderful. I'll finish within that. Okay, wonderful. This is the first time in history that a professor is finished before time. It's an Olympic record. But the professor is an investor here. Yeah, correct, correct. That is true. <laughs> okay. Now, the other very, very important issue is what I will call the team. So, you know, what is the team? The team starts with the founder. And we say as investors, uh, as angel investors or VCs, we say, even if you have an average business model and you have a great founder, 
he will figure out a way to make it work right uh, but on the other hand if you have a great um a uh, business model and an average uh, founder it will not work okay so team starting with the founder becomes extremely critical and the last thing probably the most important is what's the final proof you know you may have a terrific business model very highly innovative several patents huge market size very scalable but the ultimate proof is boss dhanda ka hai are you actually getting business are you actually getting customers are they increasing month on month quarter on quarter which is what i call traction and as you can see uh, squirrel had very strong traction because even during covid times they had about 2 lakh uh, active users which actually is fairly large for a early stage startup so this is the framework i talk about for a successful startup i also want to mention the english meaning of the word startup uh, uh, persistent right because persistent means what you've got to keep on and on and on at it you can't give up there will be lots of ups and downs probably more downs than ups but you have to make sure you just go on and on and on okay and if i have time i'll share one or two stories so now coming to the theme of the workshop i have told you what the founder should look at the next question is what do the investors look for and when i say investors it could be early stage investors which is uh, angels it could be vcs it could be anybody actually if you think about it investors look for exactly the same thing please remember both the founders and the investors have exactly the same thing in mind they want a successful fast growing rapidly scalable uh, startup which uh, prevents competitors from getting in and hopefully at some stage gets you profits the founder wants that the investor wants exactly the same thing so if you are looking at investors uh if you are looking at investment if you are looking at funding please make sure that you know you evaluate your startup within the uh, uh, persistent framework because that's exactly what investors want and when you pitch to them this is what they are looking for okay so i finish my slides but if i have 5 minutes more maybe i'll tell you a quick story from one of my startups is that okay can i yeah okay <clears throat> yeah <clears throat> so uh, i'll give you a quick little story very interesting story uh, and that tells you what investors are looking for there is a company that we were working with uh, it is called iril farms iril farms basically they are into organic farming right and you know there is a huge market for organic vegetables organic fruit because everybody wants to be healthier so these guys realized that so they were not growing vegetables but they had tied up with farmers and they used to pick up their produce from there and they realized that uh, organic farms typically operate together you can't have only one isolated organic farm you'll have to have the entire region so maybe the entire district with a lot of these organic farms otherwise you know they can pollute each other with uh, fertilizers with chemical pesticides and so on so they realized that there was a large area near shimla between solan and shimla which is in himachal pradesh uh, where a lot of farmers used to grow organic stuff so they set up a, a collection center there they used to pick up stuff from there bring it to gurgaon where they were based clean it package it and then supply it to retailers and you know the market was willing to pay 30 40 50% higher for organic stuff it was working very well then what happened in march you know what happened to the entire world covid hit them right so when covid hit them for two months there was a lockdown interstate travel was finished right the entire supply chain from himachal to gurgaon completely took a hit no trucks were moving okay so their business was killed now you know here is where you guys as a, as founders have to figure out what you want to do you can sit back and say my god mar gaya kya karunga i don't know how you would say it in gujarati but at least in hindi you would say mar gaya right i'll just sit back and watch netflix or i'll play you know video games on my tv or my computer or whatever but these guys they said no we will fight we will fight we will survive what they did was very interesting they said <clears throat> during the lockdown even local farmers were not able to reach the mandi 
and the retailers were therefore not able to get their regular vegetables i am not talking of organic i am talking of regular vegetables which are grown with fertilizers and pesticides right so they said okay right now what we will do is during the lockdown we will pick up local vegetables non organic from local gurgaon based farmers and give them to retailers in um, uh, in gurgaon not under the iril farms brand yeah because that's fooling the customer this we will just give unbranded right so the retailer uh, finds that we are very reliable suppliers because even during the lockdown we keep supplying and we do not uh, die we continue because you know we are making a margin on these normal vegetables and when the uh, lockdown ended and you know supply chain started from himachal they were back to their regular um, uh, supplies which is their organic material so just just look at what these guys did they were fighters they didn't give up they said we have to survive in fact they grew during this period right so what investors are looking for and in fact the covid period has given investors actually a very good idea of who are the founders who are fighters and who are the founders who give up so please remember if you're going to uh, investors to uh, get funding they will look at your covid period if you are a fighter if you survive the covid period the chances of them investing in you suddenly go up right and we've seen that in many many cases that we have invested in so uh, please remember a crisis is always an opportunity uh, and people are looking at what you're going to do during that crisis and i think with that maybe i'll end uh, if you have questions or maybe you have questions at the end you are free to ask thank you thank you dr nath uh, for wonderful spiritual framework and i'm sure it it will inspire both people who want to put the money and people who want to get the money uh, and thank you so much we'll come back to you with some questions towards the end sure. may I now request our dear friend mentor sasikant choudhury ji uh, who was an actively investing in startups active angel investor and uh, one of the person behind nagpur angel Uh, who has done this thing end to end? He has built a dozen companies, exited in half a dozen, invested in few dozen. So there is a complete perspective. And again, like Dr. Math, he himself invites to the classrooms of NIT Nagpur, teaches a course, and towards the end of the course, whoever give him a good business plan, he invests in that. So distinguished, uh, 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 celebrated persons in the ecosystem, Sasi Kanji, could you please guide us? Mm. thank you kiranamal uh, and uh, wonderful session by dr dhru and uh, nice to be over here to speak again uh, it's always a pleasure you guys are doing tremendous job i can see no parallels in the canvas as far as the indian states are concerned so again congratulations uh, i'm picking on the thread of uh, what uh, dr dhru said uh, you know in terms of the companies uh what kind of frameworks people would love to have and uh, you know people look at those frameworks as wonderful framework what dr dhru has mentioned about the so one of the frameworks you know that could be tried if you if you look at what dr dhru said is that what the startups are doing essentially and there are many examples well it's one example the second example which i would give is a story of a no broker.com the no broker.com is a very interesting story is a similar kind of a pattern you can see over here and what they do is they map out the ecosystem uh for the no broker for example the ecosystem was you know selling and renting the flats or apartments or houses so they mapped out the ecosystem they then they map out the value chain and in that value chain what they intelligently do at one point they make it free so they make it free so they said we are not going to charge for the brokerage so that's a normal phenomenon that you you give it on the rent or you sell you charge a brokerage and what they said guys we are not going to charge you for the brokerage which means lot of people are going to come in because now you are not going to charge brokerage second they made the entry mechanism very easy by leveraging the mechanisms like whatsapp and all those things you can list your properties you can list your apartments very easily so that they made the entry mechanism very easy then 
they sort of like created a community of those people who want to sell and who want to buy and moment there is a sizable size of that community and there is a inherent trust those things are happening on the platform what they do in that value chain the one thing is free they start charging the rest of the fees and that's what they are doing you know what they are doing is that if you want to do a sell day the sell day can be done at your home you don't have to travel uh, if i have a property at mumbai i am sitting at nagpur the the, the no broker guy will come to my home and everything can be done digitally and for that they are going to charge me so that's the monetization point the second point that will come in is if you want to move from one house to you just bought a new house and you want to move your you know valuables or the items in your house to a new house that's a relocating service they said we are going to offer that relocating service for that we are going to charge so understand the of the ecosystem is very important understand the value chain make one thing free create the community create the trust and start monetizing the rest of the business that's that's a very interesting message that comes out of the unorganized sector where you make you know free create a community earn the trust and monetize the different points of the value chain so that's one of the very interesting you know frameworks if one can look at uh, in terms of even creating so a lot of people what they are trying to do they are trying to create they, they first create a community for example i know a company out of chatisgarh they first created the community of mining so all the mining people the mining community people the professionals the the the, the guys who are providing the mining equipments and consultants they created the online community and moment they create this online community they they earn the trust and then you know after the name is known to the people they start monetizing by creating the solution so they already had a solution in the mind but they created the community first and that got the community going got their name as a trusted partner so they earn the trust of the community and then they started selling their software's platform to the mining companies uh so that's one of those ways i, I would say you know in, in terms of the the some of the frameworks which i see is that uh you know we want to see whether the startup can really fulfill their potential how can how the they can find the users in more repeatable manner more scalable manner so the kind of the thing, some formula one of the formulas that can be okay is the company having a good product market fit uh that means the customer really wants the product we are creating is the unit economics positive number 2 whether you know the cost of uh, earning from the client versus the cost of acquisition is at least 3 to 1 kind of stuff at least the ltv is 3 to 1 of the cost of acquisition whether there is a rhythm you know whatever the levers which are working are they working in a rhythmic manner are your channels working properly are your go to market strategy working properly are your getting inside sales working properly is your inbound marketing strategies are working properly is your profitability is your revenue is your engagement growing in the rhythm it should not be choppy that sometimes it goes up and sometimes it goes down no that's not a very good indicator of those things that's where we want as an investor they will try to see whether all these levers are working uh, and when they see those kind of things you know this becomes very very attractive for this kind of people so in a way this, there are some kind of if if i want to say one formula if the investor is looking in terms of the startups i would say all abilities first is it repeatable second is the business model scalable third is it profitable third fourth is it predictable fifth which is defensible if all these tables are good you are a fundable startup that's what the initial set of filtrations are applied by the investors when they really want to you know fund a early stage startup they, they want to find out you know all these you know all abilities which i talked about five of this thing five concurrently they have to be concurrently present to be product to become a kind of a product which is likely to get funded Try, they also try to find out you know what's like the capacity of the startup founders to hire great talent are they able to hire great talent yeah i think they they are 
these are the kind of the initial set of indicators where you know people are looking at i am just taking a little different track in terms of where we are and what are the gaps uh, in the indian ecosystems right now i think we are in the first stage of the you know generation as they call it us is already three generations past it's like if you compare you know the investors indian angels are typically 6000 to 7000 whereas us we are talking about 3 lakh angel investors probably there's going to go to double 6 lakhs in years to come so compare you know 6000 to 3 lakhs we are just a very small part we are just warming up i would say this process really started in 2010 12 time frame when the initial set of startup started coming so obviously the the in us you will get a lot of risk capital because there this system is in the third generation in india it is more of a scale capital and therefore it's little difficult not very so easy to get your startup funded only on the idea only on the concept so difficult not and not saying it's not possible but it's difficult to get what is happening the because this is the first cycle the exits that means the investor is putting money in us typically he would get his angel investors would typically expect to get his money back you know after 3 or 4 years because by that time the series a or series b would happen and he would get his money back that's the way the money gets revolving you put money into startups in the 3 to 4 years the, the another big guy comes in he buys out your equity you get your you know the returns on your investment whatever the returns you get you again put it back so that's the mechanism happening in us in a very kind of a cyclic manner very rhythm manner this happens in 4 years typically in india unfortunately that cycle has extended to 6 to 8 years so what just imagine we are the as it is the people are less and as it is he was expecting the money to be returned back or you know to get some kind of returns in 4 years this is happening in 4 for 8 years now and therefore one leads to another another leads to another that funnel of the angel uh, providing the leads to seed seed providing leads to series a series a providing the leads to the late stage fees all those things the cycle is getting delayed and that's where we you know at present uh, the, the there are these kind of gaps but slowly we are we are we are we, we you know we, we see those changes happening in the early stages Uh, in the 2012 there was a lot of noise there were a lot of people who just came in in the startup systems just because that was a very very interesting and a glamorous world and you know many of the startup were expecting to get funded but the things have changed quite a bit in a lighter term <laughs> i would say the if you take an example of uh, cow milk right uh, delivery of a cow milk it is a very lighter example and i am just saying how the trends change maybe in 2014 time frame the startup would say oh we deliver fresh cow milk through an android app and i need a 1 million dollar funding that is what they would say in 2017 okay they would say oh we use ai and machine learning to predict the cow's milking pattern and deliver fresh milk need 5 million dollar funding it's still delivering the fresh milk but now they will start using the glamorous words now in 2020 what they would say we have decentralized the milk distribution and are using blockchain technology to get fresh milk and i need a 10 million dollar fund so they would use those kind of jargons but the point is initially it was more of an initial people started coming in but now we are seeing that the lot of serious startups have started coming in. i would say the first wave it's my understanding of the ecosystem was 2011 12 when a lot of people came in just because of the world wide glamorous but 2016 17 cycle what i what we are seeing is the serious kind of startups and lot of you know uh, you know startups with a good problem solving ability attacking the big problems at a scale they have started emerging and also because you know the exits have happened through the uh, or the companies like flipkart and all those were those people who have played this game and when they got exit and they got money because the flipkart was acquired by walmart these people got money if you see all these top executives who got money 
they have started becoming the angel investors. This is as good as what we see as a PayPal mafia in US. I, all Elon Musk and all these people, you know, they were part of this PayPal mafia, Peter Thiel and all those people, LinkedIn founder. Now we are seeing the Flipkart mafia. I mean, it's a good, you know, in a, in a good world, <laughs> the Flipkart mafia, because those people made money and they have played the game from 2008 to 2020. So they understand those people have started coming in. We have started seeing the lot of democratization of the investing now. Sanjay Mehta's 100x, you know, VC. They are cutting the checks to the extent of 25 lakhs to 50 lakhs for early stage investing. We have started seeing the new set of investors like the VCATs. The VCATs are really taking this investing in the tier two, tier three cities. And where a new class of investors, which was not a part of startup investing, these are the traditional business houses. You know, they now they come in and they become a part of this VCATs. Uh, investment started by Apurva Sharma and believe me, in the last five years itself, this has become the third biggest community in the world in terms of startup investing. So we are in the one of the top three in the world now. See, we just started in the five, seven years back, but see the, the propensity, see the, the speed, we are at top three, the BCAS is top three. I mean, there are so many investors from tier two, tier three cities and traditional investors for here in Nagpur, you know, the healthy rams of the world and those kind of people, they are investing in the startups because of the VCATs. We are seeing the very interesting initiatives by TIE, TAI. I was also, I am also part of TAI. Now they are bringing these initiatives for the people who are financially challenged. For example, there are initiatives for women, right? Entrepreneurs only. So they would find out the women entrepreneurs in the tier two, tier three cities, mentor them, and even now they are funding them. They are creating a mechanism called as Thai Angels. Now, Thai Angels was there in the US two years back. Thai Angels activity, as I speak, is starting. That's where, at a local level, if you have Ahmedabad chapter, if you have Nagpur chapter, the, the startup can apply to the Thai startup in Nagpur, Thai chapter in Nagpur. And if they want even 10 lakh of funding, they would be able to get because each of the Thai members can fund one or two lakhs. And they're creating that mechanism to fund at an early stage because you know you can't expect. The startup from the Thai, from the Nagpur or Bhandara to go to Mumbai and pitch. They need to be supported locally. And that's what is going to happen. And a lot of industry specific accelerators are coming up. Thermax is coming up, Hero is coming up, Reliance is coming up. They have their specific domain areas. If you have innovative product at an early stage also, they will be able to fund it. Because that's in the line of their, their, their domain. And that's where, you know, in, in, you know, in, in terms of the, the, the kind of the play which is happening, I, I can tell you, which, uh, you know, one of the startups at the early stage in the college, I can tell you how these colleges are playing the role. Uh, I, I'm just giving an example. So I'm teaching this particular entrepreneurship course in uh, NIT Nagpur and one of the college. So at the early stage, you identify those kind of people and you give them the grants. These grants are given, or early stage funding is given by the alumni. We, we created a, a kind of a mechanism called as the Super 100. The Super 100 are the alumni from the same college, and they are funding these startups from their own college. Just imagine the 100 odd people right now, it's just a start. We have 21,000 alumni, and this is just start. I have 110 alumni now as a part of Special 100. In if I take it to 300, with 100 alumni, we are able to fund a startup to the extent of one crore each. We have funded almost like four startups because this started in the last four years. How much time I have got hidden MS so that I can just wrap it up in the interest of time. Now we can wrap it in uh, three minutes, sir. Yeah, so just take two minutes and then I will wrap it up. Thank you for the feedback. And one of the examples, you know, you find that talent at early stage and find out the passion. For example, Donate Card is a, uh, Anil Reddy was one, one of the students in our class. And he was so passionate in the social sector. And, you know, he started his company called as Donate Card. And the alumni is also funded. And now this company, it, during this COVID times, is doing the donations worth 8 crores a month. So 100 crores per year. This is just 22 years person who has started now maybe 23. He is like 23 year old person and the other people have now also funded it. They, what they are doing, 
is the bank. It's a platform where there are people like us who want to donate, and there are NGOs on the other side. So they have created a platform where the money goes to those platform, but not as a money, but as a product they want. And these guys, I mean, just young kid, which is like 23, 24, has managed to give 100 crores kind of a donations in the span of this COVID. That's the capability of this kind of young talent, which in the middle of things out of the box, and then they can create the mechanisms through which they can create a very, very interesting startups. I have, I have another startup. Can you imagine? This guy was like 24 years old. He created a funnel system for diesel. Uh, management, which is being put into generators, there is a lot of theft that is happening, and this guy has a world patent of, of the e funnel which he has created, and he is selling it to a lot of companies. But now, as I speak, this young boy not only managed to do that, but he has now created a partnership with Boeing, and now he is based out of the US, and he is he is working on that particular product where the large amount of data can be transferred in the millisecond. Young kids. Which is like not even 30s. They are just in 25s and 26. They are partnering with the Boeing kind of company. These are the kind of examples we can just come in if we really, you know, come in with the early stage, identifying the people at early stage and creating a mechanism through the college to fund. So these are some of those examples. In the interest of the time, I will stop you over here and hand it to back into back to Hiranam. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. The the examples that you shared and the framework in which. you are championing this cause of early stage innovation and scaling up is really inspiring may I now invite mr ratnakar samavedam the investment director of hyderabad angel uh, ratnakar is a very active enabler of uh, the innovation and sort of ecosystem in hyderabad uh, he has uh, strongly involved with the local ecosystem and also with angel investment communities uh, he is the person who could tell us how the ecosystem is evolving and what it takes for early stage financing both from the receiver point of view and also from the funding point of view the fact that the stage is yours hey hiran bhai thank you and all the panelists uh, thank you for uh, joining with us and i think dhru and uh, both of them has given very good insights what really happening in the startup ecosystem and what a startup need to look when they uh, start their own startup and pitching for an angel network actually that's really really good insight sir i think uh, i like the way uh, the the we presented each other and uh, thank you a lot thank you a lot actually uh, so today what i'm going to speak uh, is uh, how we are changing the startup ecosystem uh, funding early stage funding one of the point which has been brought in uh, in the agenda is what is the present indian scenario of angel investment in india how it is different 5 years ago and what progress it made uh, down line what i can say is uh, the startup ecosystem started technically though it is in 2001 i think 2007 8 onwards flipkart uh, started the news in the market uh, then a lot of angel network started uh, building up in india indian angel network is first of its kind then uh, mumbai angel started then chennai angel started then hyderabad angel started way back in 2012 and i think many more angels have come and uh, see we all see as an angel network uh, we wanted to bring change uh, what an uh, uh, young entrepreneurs or new age startups are bringing on the table actually that's what most of the angel networks are liking a lot they are not looking purely from funding point of view they are also looking what they can add value to the startup so that uh, most of the startups don't have an experience of running an entrepreneurship as you all agree running a startup uh, running a business it will have its own ups and downs it is the persistence that makes somebody successful if you all remember uh, the funish murthy of redbus Uh, around three years back, he came to Hyderabad Angels, and uh, he's given his thesis when Redbus was uh, started and how he sold the company. And uh, he went along and doing his PhD from UK, and he said one of the critical things for startups to succeed is patience and persistence, the two P's. As long as you are more patient and more persistent, the success rate is very very high. 
I see in today's economy, one of the company in EdTech that is an academy was there in the picture for almost a decade. They seen the success in 2020 and they started raising funds and they started building the startup. That's, that's a classic example. And I think other two in speakers also spoken how it is important for somebody to be persistent, keeping whatever they preach in terms of growth. Please understand that is very, very important. Ups and downs are common. Funding may come, funding may not come. As long as you believe your product or your service or the problem statement which you're bringing with the solution is solving the real problem, it is going to grow. So just I put one graph in before you, what really happened both in VC investment and angel investment. Uh, we This is the Bain, I think, capital recently given the news, uh, they published an article there. So you can, in 2012, uh, they funded around $3.1 million into Indian investment. And today they've done a $10 million uh, investment in India, actually. That is the average investment uh, the startups are getting funded today and uh, the renewed mechanism, I can say it is getting more and more matured, more and more people who never believed in investment in startups are started believing as Sir said, a venture catalyst, which uh, went into tire to tire three cities. Many of them who are running their traditional businesses started investing in startups. It is a very, very, very good phenomenon. And second thing is India is always starred with capital because we don't have enough resources like US of the world or China, which picked up recently, but India is always starred with resources. I think that money is getting deployed and I see this decade 2020 and 30 is going to be a great decade for many startups in India. We'll see many unicorns and money is going to get flown. So what I request uh, the early stage startups is Keep believing in your startup. Look out for right investor who can add value at early stage, that is at seed stage, and keep uh, moving your better on how you grow year on year. And technically, most of the startups, uh, angel investors in seed stage, look for an exit in a span of five to seven years. Same thing with Series A, Series B investors, Series C and Series D. So you can see the each stage of their investments, they look to five to seven years. Sometimes they go up to 10 years based on the growth and the need. So you need to identify who is the right button when you reach a stage and whom you need to approach. I've given you one more slide from the Bain Capital only. At seed stage, the average investment uh, stood at $0.7 million to $1.2 million. There people are investing. And series are around $6 million to $8 million. It really grown up. There is a huge growth. In seed stage, you can see 71% growth has been seen in last uh, one year. That is a big, big news, actually. What sir, uh, other two uh, panelists have told, uh, the enough capital is coming to early stage startups. Guys, this is a very, very good news. Please understand. Everybody is investing. That's a good news. At the early stage, Series A and Series B, as the growth went up, many has an opportunity to reach that level. Series C and Series D. Again, Series C at 16, Series D, the fund is going really, really big. Because at Series D and above, the death for money is much high. Investment deployment is also going up. So once you reach Series D+, plus, you can imagine what you can do. Today, Baiju, because I, I am telling the latest examples, Baiju is in the news. They raised around $600 million in a span of nine months. You can understand the kind of funds they're raising after going to a certain stage. So in terms of money, in terms of your growth, in terms of the confidence, I can say very comfortably, this decade of 2020 and 2030, it is going to a very good phase for startups in India in terms of getting funded and growing. And you can also see the tier one VCs, which we call it, where they put large amount of funds, Sequoia, Kalari, Axel, Matrix, Chirate, Lightspeed. Nexus, you can see the average period of their holding into the startup. You can see what I said, that five to seven years. Four to six years, seven years, five years is the average period they're holding the startups when they're investing into it. This is the news which you guys need to observe and what is the current average age of the portfolio. So 
when a startup comes to hyderabad angels or venture catalyst or any other angel network lead angels we are very clear we know when we are investing we are having a journey with you for 5 years only one point i request uh, startup founders is whether you take an investment of 5 lakhs from an angel or you take a 500 crores from a large vc an investor is an investor and as an investors we bring value beyond capital do respect us don't throw us i seen many startup founders going head high on the ego system and most of the angel investors are feeling bad are guy invested him at early stage by putting 1 crore of my capital but later once they are getting a larger capital they are ignoring they are saying you are not the kind of investor i want today but we are saying you need to remember your base foundation investors keep them intact and you guys once you are growing into the big level your respect back to your angel investors will help lot more other startups who are looking for funds to get more funds i seen some of the serial investors uh hyderabad Hy- 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 angels are outside also who has started investing in from 2011 they stopped because some of the founders who have really grown well they they would have given the return but they have lost respect among investors they are feeling a startup which is growing big they are not respecting us a startup who is not able to grow they are always coming and asking for funds instead of asking for what is the help they can bring differently is not they are seeing from the startup founders guys please keep this point give that respect your respect to any angel investor or a large vc investor who is invested in early stage need to be t- given good respect i am not saying you need to spend time give the respect so that for them the next level investors will get funded otherwise they are not going to get funded these all these people will shy away that's what i am observing i don't know other panelists can watch on that point <clears throat> another point which bain also said today we have 79000 startups out of which 92% are unfunded you can understand how many are getting only 8% of the startups are getting funded in that 8% 6400 at series c level only 23% are able to raise post seed at series a 41% series b 40% series the success rate you can see at the end of the day out of 79000 only 300 startups are able to cross that bridge of series c that you see 0.05% 0.5% of the startups which have been emerged so this is like a person as a sort in squirrel example how people will pursue and how they go about it is very very important you need help guys you need help and that is where as an angel investors we are there to help you please keep that in mind we are not shying away just by putting funds we are there to help you please come back we will provide required support and we see that you cross this each of this uh, stages like c series a series b wherever you are falling short we are there to help you this is what so one more maths how the startup went from 27000 to 79000 how the funding so decent amount of growth has went up decent amount of startups have grown as one of our panelists said the worst a situation become the less it takes to turn it around and the bigger the upside so corona we seen as a big opportunity for many startups who can survive sustain and we wanted to fund that startups so we are really looking for the startup pure what we are looking at. and we also believe the future is created by what you do today not tomorrow this particular phase we believe more particularly how the startup founder is looking himself and seeing himself to the grow to the next level so these are the points here uh, wow, final thing from me as there is a good amount of synergy coming in the ecosystem there is good amount of uh, funding is going to come to you guys and uh, as our panelists both of the panelists have said very good examples how people have seen differently there is money available please come uh, do your pitching sessions with us we are there to fund the right companies and help you to grow thank you wo naam batao mujhe thank you so thank much you. Uh, thank you for laying out the entire structure how the financial engineering of the investment ecosystem is working and also sharing the psyche of the investment cycles philosophy and your own insights of pooling in the angel ecosystem in hyderabad these are very informative the data points are quite quite impactful thank you for putting together such a wonderful presentation uh, oh, no, and, thank you. and i can see a lot of comments on facebook live that these are real data driven strategies 
on investment. It's not only an emotional business of looking into an impressive idea and putting money, but how this ecosystem and deviates can also be data driven, how this can be more systematic, how this thing can be more engineered. That's what something that we can take from you. Now we have our dear friend Ravi Ranjan. Uh, uh, Ravi is a wonderful uh, human being and well wisher of the entire ecosystem in Gujarat. Ravi, the stage is yours. Thanks a lot, uh, Hiran Meji. It is a pleasure to be speaking to uh, all the guests and all the participants once again here. First of all, I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, the team I have. I would like to extend my gratitude to Team Nagarajanji and uh, all the panelists who are here, Mr. Sachi Khan Chaudhary, my dear friend Ratnakar from Hyderabad Angels, Professor Pandya, and uh, it is truly a privilege to be here. Um, over the next uh, few minutes, I'll talk about the topic, which is early stage investment. Um, like every other ecosystem, uh, early stage investment is one of the most crucial role uh, in supporting and developing the startup ecosystem uh, across the world. If you look at the data point and look at the history, how ecosystems in Silicon, Silicon Valley or Tel Aviv, or for that matter in, in UK, how they evolved was the support provided at an early stage. India is now going through the phase where US was 30 years ago, uh, as mentioned uh, earlier by um, our senior uh, speaker, Mr. Um, Sashikan Chaudhryji from Nagpur Angels. He you know, put some very interesting point, which I always used to think. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, around 10 years ago, I was part of Indian Angel Network. Um, this was the time when the ecosystem was just starting and very few people were aware about investment opportunities. In fact, uh, they were very less number of angel investors as well. At that point of time, I used to see startup struggle. Um, they used to get disappointed because people were not ready to support their idea at, at their early stage. They used to get feedback such as, okay, maybe reach at this stage and then we'll like to have a conversation. But the question was, how do I reach till that stage? And that was the gap. Now, after all these 10 years, I have figured out that um, the challenge lies because India is still starting up to uh, you know this entire investment landscape while there are a lot of interesting players um, there are, there is still a small gap which needs to be fulfilled and I'm, I think all the networks across the country are doing a wonderful job um, I had I have had an opportunity to work with some of the best entrepreneurs in the country in organizations such as NASCOM 10,000 startups uh, Indian Angel Network and etc and now for the last two and a half years I have been part of Venture Catalyst uh, where I'm helping them with their expansion their growth and uh, we have this very interesting program called Angel Investment Masterclass where we reach out to st investors across India in small and big cities. We have went out to places like Rachi and uh, Coimbatore and Siliguri and it's so amazing to see that people in I mean, large cities like Mumbai, Bangalore, Hyderabad, definitely there are angel investors, people who have had successful exits or who have uh, you know, expertise around entrepreneurship. They are very keen on supporting these startups. But people in this small town are also very keen in supporting the ecosystem. Um, so that's very, very exciting. I have put together a small um, you know, deck. Uh, I'll just spend around five minutes to give you a little insight on what is exactly the landscape of India, what, what the landscape was in 2016 and how the landscape is now and how we can kind of take it ahead from here. So um, this is how the landscape was in 2016 and now in 2019. If you look at uh, the startup landscape in terms of investment, uh, the early stage deals in 2016 were as low as 381. The number of angel investors were 430. And if you look at the average deal value, it was $150,000. There were just two accelerator funds. Uh, there were 63 VC funds. Number of syndicate platform were three. But then look at the phenomenal growth in the next just three years. Uh, we have had more than 1,100 early stage deals, more than 5,000 angel investors. The deal value has in increased significantly to $650,000. There are now four accelerator funds, 189 VC funds, and the syndication platforms has increased 20%. If you look at the growth percentage, it has been phenomenal. In 2016, there were some really great networks. You look at on your screen, Indian Angel Network, uh, Mumbai Angels in Angel Network platform in syndication, you have AngelList and Let's Venture, Microfunds, Bloom and Orias. But still there was a, a gap and that is where, you know, we at Venture Catalyst, we tried to uh, disrupt the entire model and we introduced for the first time in the country an integrated incubation-led investment approach. 
this also talks about the early stage investment and how uh, this entire investment pans out so if you look at the you know the the slide here we have a very interesting approach where uh, for the first 0 to 3 months of the startup uh, inception we have a 300 crore fund called nine unicorn uh, where we invest uh, up to hundred thousand dollars in the first round uh, We also provide support on product and business acceleration um, Also, this is not uh, about nine unicorn and venture catalyst What I'm trying to share is the fundamental framework which is required for any e ecosystem to grow and I'm very glad to see that Gujarat is following almost a similar approach where support is provided at all stages when we move to the 6 and 18 months we have venture catalyst which is an uh, investment platform we invest up to a million dollar we also provide integrated education for almost 18 months. market access uh, is provided to now 40 plus cities in india and five countries outside india because we have more than 4500 angel investors with us uh, for the next 18 months where uh, startups are going to series a and etc we have organizations like google sequoia etc who are co-investing in these opportunities look at this uh, number i mean this is phenomenal how india uh, as a country is growing uh, if you look at uh, you know uh, uh, I mean, I'm not. I'm going to skip the slides which talks about venture catalyst. I'm just trying to give an overall perspective. Uh, if you look at the landscape in India, um, typically when you talk about startup investment, a lot of emphasis is given on to technology and software companies, which is all right because software companies can scale very fast with a very lean and agile team. But then we looked at some traditional approach as well, and we got some really good success stories. The first company I would like to talk about is Beardo. Uh, it's a very interesting company from Gujarat, uh, Ahmedabad they are india's first men grooming company and they become very very popular they have had uh, brand ambassadors like mr sunil shetty shahid kapoor and etc they got acquired by marico a very interesting success story uh, we have one more interesting company which is non tech is p safe uh, p safe is a personal hygiene startup uh, they have completely transformed the way uh, traditional businesses are looked in india i would I'd also like to move on uh, to the next uh, segment and talk about this very interesting map which you see here as uh, our our earlier speaker was mentioning very beautifully how the true potential of startup as well as the angel investment lies in tier 2 and tier 3 cities we have taken this opportunity to democratize angel investment and for all the startups who are watching us today this would become very helpful for you because when you have an investor coming from a small town across the country, they would be able to understand the passion which you have. And because we'll have more and more angel investors coming and supporting the ecosystem, the opportunity for you to raise capital will, be, will become uh, very you know, affordable as well as very easy. Um, we have, we as an organization have access in all these cities across India. Uh, it looks very interesting. It is also very powerful for a startup because imagine if you get uh, on a platform like this you are based out of Delhi but then you would be able to sell your product in any of the cities where the partners are present and that is a very interesting integrated approach which makes um, startup journey very very easy for our portfolio companies we are also very proud that we have uh, initiatives like found network we have uh, planned uh, to uh, doing thousand plus master classes to educate new angels this would fill the gap where early stage investment is missing once we have more and more number of angel investors coming and joining the ecosystem this particular gap where startups struggle to raise funding at an early stage when they are building up their venture would be fulfilled i already spoke about uh, that startup can be non-tech as well technology is just an enabler and companies like fasos viba be safe and beardo they are very interesting examples so if you are building a non-tech company you should not get demotivated that you might not raise that important investment capital because now investors understand that while technology is good and scalable non-tech products can also be scaled if the approach is interesting also very interesting uh, i want to share this uh, very interesting to you it depends on what stage of company you are some cases it might happen that at an early stage you might have to shell out a little bit more equity or you have 
been able to save because your product is very interesting. So the round name does not define the quantum. Startup can raise any capital. If you look at the example here, Oyo raised hundred thousand dollar, less than hundred thousand dollar as a seed round. But today they are one of the only, one of the few Decacon in the country. A Decacon is a company which is valued at ten billion dollar and above. Innovate again, they raised less than five hundred thousand investment. Club. On the other side raised 1.5 million and Jupiter, which is a very interesting new banking concept, they raised $24 million at their seed round. Uh, this slide is very, very important. A lot has been said about the pandemic and we all understand businesses across the world suffered a lot. But this is not the first time when the world is going through a financial crisis. Uh, <clears throat> If you look at the numbers here, December 2007 to two, June 2009, there was an 18 month of financial meltdown. But then at this point, some of the biggest companies which we know today, they were born WhatsApp, Slack, Zomato and Drua. These are some of the examples of many companies which started during this financial meltdown. And interestingly, Slack, which is a very interesting company. Uh, I'm a personal fan of Slack. Uh, it started as an accident. The Slack founding team, they worked on and they developed a game called Glitch. While the game was not very successful, but in order to make Glitch, they had developed an internal communication system so that their teams can work from any geography and contribute in, in making this game. Later on, they realized that this is a very interesting opportunity. They launched Slack and it became so popular that Slack is now one of the biggest communication platform for corporates and businesses across the world. And interestingly, last week, Slack got acquired for $28 billion. Salesforce acquired the company. Coming back to the conversation point, if you look at the Indian unicorns, more than 25% or nine out of 36 unicorns in India, they were born during the financial meltdown. And overall, across the world, 72 unicorns were born during the recession time. So what I'm trying to say is that while, uh, you know, um, uh, this is a very challenging time, but this should not be any uh, any way to demotivate you that you cannot build a venture. In fact, um, I have personally witnessed some of the startups uh, achieving fabulous growth over the last five to six months. Right after uh, the lockdown was announced, for the first month, it was very challenging. People were not sure how to do things. In fact, for us at Venture Catalyst, um, initially we thought, how would you know this entire thing pan out because most of our events and activities were offline but then we moved to online and now we are very glad that we did that because we are now able to work in different time zones uh, we are able to uh, host all the sessions in a very interesting way and things have increased very very significantly so coming back to uh, one last point which i want to like which i would like to share here is that uh, the topic of the day is very interesting uh, early stage investment and how early stage investment can help uh, the entire ecosystem to grow. If you look at the data for Indian startup ecosystem, as of 2019, we have close to 60,000 startups in the country and we have around 10,000 angel investors. But when we compare us to large ecosystems like China or US, we are just, just starting. We are scratching the surface. A country of 1.4 billion, uh, there need to be millions of startups and there need to be thousands of and thousands of investors to support these ideas because you need to understand as a startup if you are doing well you have revenue you are you know positive you not necessarily need a lot of capital you might need some money to grow but you require su support to be able to build your prototype number one to be able to find good team members to be able to find good technology and to be able to go to the next level and that is where this early stage support is very important. We are very glad at Venture Catalyst that we have uh, been able, we have been very lucky to get some very good quality startups as well as investors who believe in the idea of democratizing angel investment for nation building. And I'm sure that with support from uh, uh, iHub and this wonderful initiative by government of Gujarat, we would see some phenomenal results coming up from uh, Gujarat region as well. Uh, that's all from my side. Uh, it is once again very interesting opportunity for me to be here. I would like to wish all the best to all the participants who are watching us. Uh, we are almost at the end of the year and uh, next year will come with some very interesting hope, very interesting opportunities and I would like to congratulate all of you and wish you guys all the best. Thank you so much. Over to you Hiran Meji. Thank you so much Ravi for your wonderful thoughts and ideas. May I now request Nagarjan sir, Commissioner Higher Education, Government of Gujarat, 
to summarize the session. Uh, thank you, Hiran Mai. We are indeed uh, very happy to have uh, very, uh, people who are supporting uh, startups in the early stages. And uh, it has been a very enlightening session because we have heard a lot of industry level inputs. So far, uh, majority of our discussions have been in uh, academia and a little bit of industry collaboration. But the venture capital industry per se, which has been being represented today, especially for early stage startups is very crucial for us. And each of them have brought in the perspectives from their unique experiences, their background, and also the role they play in the ecosystem in supporting the startups to scale. And especially, uh, um, uh, remembering uh, what uh, Sashi said about uh, the local industry collaborative course uh, where they have mapped, mapped the curriculum and having uh, people from the industry practitioners to come and deliver the entire curriculum and also take the journey of mind to market for the entire students throughout their journey of college, making it a parallel journey. So the student evolves both academically and also as an entrepreneur. In fact, uh, that is one of the goals of SSIP to provide uh, an early exposure to startup and innovation experience for the students and uh, empower them to think big and not take failure as a failure and also work on building their vision over the long term. Also, Mr. Drew mentioned about the framework and also uh, which provided a very, very uh, easy to understand view for students. I'm sure today, a lot of our students who are watching this program on Facebook and also all the mentors who are supporting them would have found it very easy way to explain to the student how to uh, understand their value proposition as a startup. Working on an idea, coming to a POC is one thing, but looking at it from a startup perspective is a different ball game where he has given some pointers on how they can analyze their idea and also about uh, having milestones of reaching some 5% of market share and how to grab that early mover advantage and winning trust. These are some of the things that will, ideas that will endure with us, I'm sure. And uh, we will also take these ideas into our discourse in the other platforms also. And uh, I was also especially enlightened about how the VC perception cycle and, uh, is changing about when to do the exits. And because of that, which is uh, having uh, impact on the funding uh, funding scenario, and it's very fast evolving uh, evolving for us because suddenly our uh, ecosystem is getting more active, dynamic, and also maturing fast. Uh, and uh, so that is also we we normally talk about innovation and product uh, funding. Also, uh, we talk about getting funding, but how? The funding industry is changing and how it's going to affect the funding of startups is something that we got uh, to understand today. And also now Ravi is back here with us. Uh, he has done an, uh, already a session with us. We had a special webinar also with him. And uh, the focus area where he is also working, especially we are also looking at supporting local ecosystems by the local high HNIs. You know, from the traditional investing mindset, this will be uh, taught about uh, the uh, angel investing and uh, this kind of venture capital, risk capital scenario needs to be introduced to them. So it is a broader uh, creation of uh, uh, ecosystem across the various stakeholders, not just the students and innovators, not just the catalysts and supporters, and not just the seed funding, but also the venture capital, which will finally connect with the mainstream uh, startup and innovation ecosystem in the country. That way, today's session has brought in a very mature perspective and uh, also brought in uh, uh, various ideas that we could uh, make it as a take-home point for this today. So I thank uh, uh, the organizers I have, Government of Gujarat and Anjishama Madam and the Chief Mentor, Himanshu Pandya sir for a continued guidance in actually sculpting this session and putting it together as part of this entire today's summit. And uh, I'm sure that the time that you people have invested in this, uh, in this uh, session will bring a lot of returns in terms of impact, in terms of supporting our startups and making it really useful on the ground. Thank you so much for joining us today and also sharing with your valuable perspectives. 
and uh, we will be uh, grateful to you for this and we look forward to continuing our discussions and collaborations with you in future also thank you so much